In this video, we're going to talk about major and minor contributors and what the heck that actually means. So this has to do with resonance structures. We were just talking about resonance structures. Resonance structures, if you remember, are the different ways that a molecule can appear in nature. So as an example, I have two versions of formaldehyde here. So formaldehyde, we see it can either have, you know, oxygen with this double bond here, no charges on the elements within it or the atoms. And then we also see oxygen having a negative charge here, as well as carbon having a positive charge here. So we want to know which one of these is the major contributor to the resonance hybrid and which is the minor contributor. Remember, a resonance hybrid is kind of the way that these mash up and actually look in nature. So the one that's going to be more stable is going to be more prevalent in nature. It's going to be more, um, it's going to give more of a contribution to the resonance hybrid. It's going to be the major contributor. So we have a little bit of a checklist that we want to go through. So we're going to call this our determining major contributor checklist. We'll just say a checklist. I had to put it in green. <laughs> so our first step, our checklist uh, that we're going to go through is which one has the most octets? Now, if we can't figure it out based on that, we're going to go to step two, which is which one has the most bonds? And still, if they're still the same, we're going to move on to step three. And that's going to be if it has a negative charge. Is it on the more electronegative element? So like if it had an electronegative or a, a negative charge, would it be on oxygen? versus on carbon, that's important because oxygen is more electronegative. And then finally, if we still don't know, we can go to number four, which is as little charge separation as possible. So these steps, we do not have to fulfill all of them. Really, you're just gonna go down the list. So if it hits number one and you know which one has more octets, then you don't need to do any of the other steps. If you have to move on to number two, you only need number two to figure it out, that's great, you don't have to do the other steps. So this is really just kind of a step-by-step -step process, and the more steps uh, are for you if you can't figure it out just yet. So let's go back up to our formaldehyde resonance structures. Now, which one has the most octets here? So we see oxygen has an octet, carbon does not have an octet, Hydrogen, we can kind of count them as an octet because they're satisfied. But check this out. Oxygen has an octet and carbon has an octet. So immediately, we know this is our major contributor. I'm going to put the major contributor. But if we check out our other steps, we could have figured this out with other ones too. Which one has more bonds? Well, our major contributor does. It has um, a double bond there. If it does have a negative charge, is it on the more electronegative element? The minor contributor does have that, but we have no charge over here, which is even better. And then as little charge separation as possible, guess what? This one has charge separation, and this one does not. So we easily know which one is our major contributor, and it's this one over here on the left. Now, let's go ahead. We're going to go back up into some material from our last video, right? We're going to talk back about methyl nitrate. So if you didn't watch the last video, I'm sorry this looks a little messy, <laughs> but we were having a good time. So let's figure out which one is the major contributor of these two methyl nitrate structures that we have drawn here. So remember, our first rule is looking at the most octets. So really, we know carbon has an octet. We know hydrogen does. This oxygen has an octet. This nitrogen has an octet, as does this oxygen. So here, octet, octet octet. So the octets are set. But now let's check out which one has more bonds. Remember, that's our second step. And if we check this out, it looks like they have the same number of charges. So now we're a little bit uh, confused. 
Now our third step is seeing if there is a charge, is it on the more electronegative element? And it is. Our negative charge is here on oxygen. So that fulfills our rule. Now this one doesn't have a charge, so we already know it's kind of our major contributor. But let's just play along with this. We know that our negative charge is on our more electronegative element, so that's good. And then our fourth step, remember our fourth step down here is as little charge separation as possible because charge separation is bad. So we're going to go back up and guess what? There is no charge here, but there is charge separation here. So this is going to be our major contributor. So that's how we determine our major and minor contributors for our resonance structures. And the resonance hybrid is going to end up looking more like the major contributor. So what we can do, let's check this out. Let's see exactly what this might look like, formaldehyde in its resonance hybrid. This might be a little hard to do, but let's go for it. So I'm going to draw it over here in green. So we know that the position of the atoms is always going to be stationary, right? And we know that the bonds are always going to be at least a single bond. We can't break those single bonds. But now what we have to get into is something called bond order. Bond order. We're going to put this down here in our little green text. So bond order is a way of determining how many bonds are actually seen in the resonance hybrid. And what we do is add up all of the bonds that we see for this particular area and then divide it by how many resonance structures there are. So we're trying to figure out the bond order for this right here. So we see that in our first resonance hybrid uh, or in our first resonance structure, our major contributor it has two bonds. And then we see in our second, it has one bond. And then we divide it by how many resonance structures there are. There are two. So that means this is going to have a 1.5 bond order, which is basically a bond and a half. And so here, this is not really uh, anything we have to worry about because we have one bond plus one bond divided by two structures. We still have one bond. So this is going to be more like what we see in nature. We're going to see a bond and a half between the carbon and the oxygen here in formaldehyde. And that's because uh, it is a resonance hybrid. And it's probably going to look more like our major contributor so we can throw those two electrons up there. So hopefully that helped. Uh, my name is Ben, and thanks for watching.